What's up? We back with another episode of 411 Uncut. Today I got a very, very special guest in the building right now, my homie Trey G. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, just living, living. Hey, you you living good right now, man. I've been seeing a lot of you. We've been good friends about the, <laughs> the whole month of March. See, getting like, familiar. We've been getting familiar, man. <laughs> First off, I want to say congratulations to you for being the grand prize winner for our 411 showcase, man. Thank, uh, you, thank you. You really came out. And showed out. I'm not gonna lie, but we, we'll get into that. We gonna get into that a little later. Now, Trey G, man, you from Cincinnati, Ohio, born and raised. Mm -hmm. Well, more towards like Hamilton ish, but yeah, we're all over. Okay, so so like in the Hamilton area right. is where you grew up. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, what was it like for you out of Hamilton growing up? It actually, it wasn't too bad. I actually went to school out in like uh, Oxford towards Miami University, but I lived in Hamilton, so it was kind of bouncing okay. back and forth, and okay. then. More music related stuff was kind of up this way but mm -hmm. yeah it wasn't bad at all okay so uh well, did you have any siblings who was it was you raised with your mom and dad or how, how mm -hmm. was it yeah i got one older sister and uh yeah raised with both both parents okay yeah and just you said one older sister mm -hmm. so you're the yeah. baby yep yeah, i'm the baby Oh, well, okay, then your sister, she baby you a liar. She, <laughs> no, she, no. <laughs> she was mean to you growing little bit, up? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what were you doing? Were you playing any sports? Like, as a kid, what was you really into? Yeah, yeah, I played uh, football for about 10 or 11 years, wrestled for about the same 10 or 11 years because my, my dad also wrestled and coached and mm -hmm. all that. So, yeah, we were pretty heavy in sports. Wow. Mm. So your whole career, high school career you were in sports? Uh, about half of high school, yeah. Yeah, mm. probably didn't do the last two years of high school. But and what like high school did you graduate from? Talawanda. Okay, yep, yep. that's what's up. Now, after high school, what was you into? Well, uh, strictly music, really. Just, you know, fresh wow. out of high school, trying to get a little baby job. And, you know, just still cranking out music in the studio, heavy, stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. So how how old were you? Were you, were you like, messing around with the music while you were in high school a little bit? It was actually elementary school, really. I started making music when I was about nine. What? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, me and Todd. Todd kind of brought me in when I was young because... He um he was in the same um, lowrider car club as my dad. Okay, okay. So they were super clicked up, and I knew they did music. Mm -hmm. So it kind of went that way, and you know he kind of took me in under his wing and kind of helped mold me. So wow. yeah, I've been so, making music for a minute. So you you cracked the mic. Yeah. At nine. <laughs> yeah. No wonder you so good. <laughs> it, it, it makes sense now. You had a lot of practice. Not a whole lot. Yeah. So what was it like that first time you, you got? No, first of all, what made you decide to get into rap music? Like, were you out? Who was your influences? What artists were you listening to growing up? So were you like, man, I'm really like into into rap. Um, since my dad was in the, like the whole lowrider scene, I was, I had a really heavy West Coast influence. West Coast, like Ice Cube, Too Short, you know, all that stuff. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you was dead. That was my whole thing. And then, um, Todd, he, he, they actually made music too. A lot of the guys, a, a handful of the guys that were in the car club made music. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was, I listened to more of them than anything else. But, uh, yeah, they really influenced me to get in there. So when I finally convinced Todd to let me get in there. You had the baggy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. And uh, when I finally got in there, it was actually real comfortable. I wasn't nervous at all because I was already familiar with him and dad was there. It was, it was actually a really comfortable, cool, smooth experience. Now, do you still got your first song? I do, I do. Wow. Yeah, I got the little high-pitched Mickey Mouse voice, all that. I was super <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just spitting them bars. Mm -hmm. Well, I was trying. <laughs> do you ever do you ever go back and really listen to it to see the growth? I was actually listening to it the other day. I was going through the catalog and I come across the old Trey G file. Yeah, we were <laughs> just cracking up listening to it. <laughs> it sounded so young. Well, and it, it seemed like um, Todd has been a, a major influence with you being an artist. For people that don't know, tell them who Todd is. So Todd, Todd Scharf, he, I, if you're familiar with the Cincinnati music scene and you know like Jay Graham, back in the day with Big Spender. Todd mm -hmm. produced that. And um they they got a deal for a little while. And um yeah, Todd Todd's been active in the game for quite ever since I've known him. So mm -hmm. long time. And yeah, he kinda just took me under his wing, helped like mold me and tell me the do's, do nots, you know. Yeah. Point me in the right direction. Kinda just he's responsible for the path I'm on today for sure. No Man. doubt. That's Todd's the up. homie. 
man and, and now being an artist you know being from hamilton and you, you seeing um you know cincinnati kind of got is the bigger city mm -hmm. to, to hamilton did you realize like man i really probably gonna have to get down to cincinnati yeah. to get moving for sure because you i mean if you don't live here no one even really knows hamilton exists you know <laughs> <laughs> not really because <laughs> so, you're gonna say you're from cincinnati right exactly yeah. yeah so you definitely gotta ain't nothing going on in hamilton so you gotta come down here to get involved and get active so mm -hmm. now what's some of the things that you were doing to build up um you know that that fan base to get because i'm not gonna lie when i you came out to the showcase that i that we had uh the 4191 and you had i want to say maybe 20 some people with you or more seem like i mean they singing the words they in the crowd they're going crazy uh what have you what have you done um in the meantime to build that fan base up well i really tried to take advantage of it when i was in school because i was out in oxford where miami university is so when i was in high school i was going up there trying to recruit all the college kids as fans you know what i mean wow that's stuff smart. like that plus the kids i was in school with and then i also tried to take advantage of uh, all the people that my dad know going all to these shows and everything and he's well known in the lowrider scene So I was just trying to capitalize and grab them all if I can so that was that was a big part of it for sure A lot of my base is you know out from Oxford and Hamilton and a lot of lowrider guys all over the country So man. When, when do you see you when do you think you start seeing like a difference where you like man? I probably can really like really do something with this rap shit like when did it when did you notice like man this can actually take off and people really think i'm good yeah um it was really a lot of the feedback from like people across the country like my dad's friends and stuff they, they all the feedback we would get was never negative it was always like okay okay and it would just get better and i'm like okay well i haven't really got any terrible feedback it's always been like super positive mm -hmm. i mean i just kind of had kind of knew like i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty good you know mm -hmm. so yeah i just full send you know Hell yeah. And I, I feel like now, though, with the with the Internet, you can really kind of take off more. Do you feel like the Internet has helped you at all? Have you built a big Internet following? Yes and no. I mean, I think it definitely helps. You just got to figure out, I guess, what kind of works for you personally, I guess. Um, I'm still trying to diagnose that formula, you know, still working and building on that. But, um, yeah, it's definitely easier because it's right at the touch of your fingertips, you know. Man, yeah. right at the touch of your fingertips. Because I, I noticed that when, when we had first started... Uh, of connecting and he was like i don't really be on instagram that much yeah. i'm like oh no like you gotta get <laughs> you know i'm like i'm following you on instagram mm, anyway like yeah. and i'm gonna start tagging you and stuff <laughs> and, you know like because it's so important because and, and i know that sometime being from you know years ago we we used to go hand in hand a lot yeah. you know you used to be able to just be like well you know, I'll go somewhere and pass out my flyers. But nowadays, people really want to watch you on the Internet. Mm -hmm. And it was like back in the because I, I come from like both sides of it. I was early enough to where it was one on one engagement. You had to go really push and promote yourself. Now it's, you know, behind, all mostly behind a screen. So I caught glimpses of both. So mm -hmm. it's just really adapting, you know, trying to get used to it. For sure. Now, um. I was excited when you did hit me up for the 41911 showcase and you were like one of the first artists there. You were prompt. Like <laughs> I, I love your promptness uh, yeah. about you. Is that something that you make sure when you're dealing? A lot of people, when they're dealing with professionals, they might not feel like they have to be prompt, but you are really prompt. Is yeah. that just you? Yeah, that, that definitely me. I've, I don't think I can name more than one event I, or anything I've ever been late to. Mm -hmm. My grandpa and my dad always told me, you know, if you're if you're on time, you're late. Mm -hmm. You know, so. But but it, it made you stand out. Yeah. It yeah. made you stand out <laughs> for you. sure. And I was excited. I'm like, you know, I can't wait to see him hit the stage and see what he brings. <laughs> and you bring it that night. Tell me about the two songs that you performed. Seemed like the first one was just like a, you know, you, you, you vibing on there, you talking your stuff, you letting us know you can rap, and then the second one, you took off. <laughs> so tell me about those two singles you performed at the showcase. Both of those singles are off my latest project, Coming In Hot, and um, it was more definitely a more of an energetic project for sure. I know the first one I performed was Villain, and that was kind of like a mean, kind of aggressive, menacing type of song. Mm -hmm. I've usually got pretty good reception off of it, so I'm like, that'd be a good one to kick it off. And then No Relax, and I felt fit that whole vibe a little yes. pretty good. Yes. And so it was. A, I've always got good reception off that one pr uh, when I perform it, for mm -hmm. sure. I've never gotten anything bad from it. So I thought it would fit that show really well. 
lucky enough, it did. It had a good result. Man, were you were you shocked at all the people that was like, by the time you were done, at, at how people were like yelling and clapping? Were you, yeah. were you shocked? A little bit, yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> especially because it was a you know like a competition. But mm -hmm. so yeah, I think I gained some new fans that night for sure. <laughs> Man, I, I want to say um, every judge, majority of the judges, they was like, you know, you were. You were like, they were like, he's hot. Like, who is he? People were coming up asking, like, who yeah. is he? Like, <laughs> he's hot. They really um, enjoyed your performance. Now, your performance skills is very up to par, though. Um, do you, like, practice a lot? Because you were engaging with the crowd. Yeah. Um, it was lit. Tell me, tell me, do you practice a lot? What is it? I do. I like. I'm really super like anal about knowing every every line, just memorizing everything. Like, even when I perform, I make sure I hit every single. I know when I'm taking my breaths. I, especially when it's time to do it, I rehearse like nobody's business. Yeah. I'm just I'm super on it about stuff like that. But you could tell because you know one thing that the judge, you you were watching a lot of the show mm -hmm. yourself, yeah. And uh, we noticed that was some of the things that the judges were saying, like man, you know, some of you guys your songs okay, but the performance is just yeah. boring. And you were up there by yourself <laughs> on that stage, going from left to right back to the middle rocking it out i'm like this guy is a damn pro <laughs> i'm like he's a pro he's up here killing it and um everybody that was there was singing the words back to back they were coming in like we here for trey g like they were all saying that man uh with some of those people like family members and stuff too that made sure they came out yeah i think i had two or three family members there mom was there wow like, yeah but most was friends and you know yeah yeah they showed out for sure that's for dope sure. so uh so your mom and dad they really um support you yeah, being an artist for sure they definitely do very supportive and we're definitely grateful for that it doesn't always pan out that way <laughs> yeah like it's good that they want you to follow your dreams and believe in you mm. and, and knowing that you got that support on the back end when they tell you to keep going and make you be like i could do this yeah d definitely gives you that peace of mind for sure for sure 